Hello everyone, System Chalk here, and we are beginning our Cultist Simulator playthrough, which will be an Apostle run. Uh, so this is going to be the first time that I've done this exclusively for YouTube. These are going to be the 20-minute split videos, as I mentioned in sort of the prologue. Unfortunately, when I started to record this video, uh, I got a notification on my phone, which I thought I had silenced. I spilled the coffee and made a mess on the desk. So it's possible that some of the introductory steps that I, uh, I had taken uh, didn't wind up, uh, didn't uh, get recorded, or rather were saved, and now that I'm recording the video here, uh, they're not, not turning out. So let's start by hitting continue, and uh, if I have already got the desktop... No, excellent! Um, so I actually have different draws though, I wound up with the exile uh, last time, but I do seem to have the priest on its own. So uh, when you start Cult of Simulator, uh, this will not necessarily be a playthrough that is best if you are brand new to the game, uh, because I'm about to play what is sort of this game's version of New Game Plus. But that doesn't mean that I can't talk about the selections that we have. So the priest was, uh, it used to be the last DLC for the game, but they did ultimately decide to release the exile, which pretty much was like Cult of Simulator 1.5. So I really enjoyed this one, but it's the least popular of the DLC. Uh, this time we drew the Bright Young Thing, so uh, before I actually got the Exile, which I had a lot of fun with. Uh, this is the, this is not only one of the, the base game's legacies, but this is actually one of the most common ways that people wind up getting the Sensation Ascension, which is the uh, playthrough that we're just coming off of. So one thing about Cult of Simulator is that your playthroughs actually feed into each other. There's either a whole bunch of different histories, or you have... Uh, a character who was a follower of your previous one, perhaps they were maybe a hunter of them. And so what we're going to be playing here is the Apostle Obstinate. Our delight has grown powerful and they are, uh, have powerful enemies. They will remain in hiding while I serve as their vessel. This is always available after the Feast of the True Birth. And it starts with duty and delight, health and passion. We'll be able to figure out what those are uh, when, we, when we start the game. But as I said, this is this game's version of New Game Plus, uh, and I'm not going to be doing any cut in terms of the gameplay. So hopefully you'll enjoy the Apostle run. But do keep in mind that this is not something that you can access unless you have completed the Grail Ascension like we did on the, uh, the live stream. And as always, we begin with an empty desk. Apostle Obstinate, the one who nourished us, has ascended to a higher state, in one history at least. The path is uncertain, but I will prepare the feast for their next ascension. Now, here's something that people get wrong all the time in this game. You click the name, and you gotta give them a name, so... Ike Upscribe. The follower of Paul Samuelson, our previous, uh, our previous uh, host or our previous um, founder. So, as with Cult of Simulator, you always start off with the work verb and a few, a few starting cards. So we've got passion. Dull minds are neither intuitive nor mathematical. Sorry, dull minds are neither intuitive or mathematical. Uh, it is an ability. It has the aspect of moth, and it is an ingredient. Duty and delight, our delight save me from death and also from boredom. We shall give them everything. This is currently my job. And finally, health. This is my body. There are other bodies, but this one is mine. And my mind needs it as a fungus needs soil. With enough vitality, you can gain more health. It's also an ability. It has the aspect of heart and it has an ingredient. So, of course, if you're playing this, you will have already successfully wrestled the game to its knees once, and so you should probably already know that you put work items in the work slot. But, of course, when you pick up a card, it's going to put a little uh, pink outline around things that you can work with. And, of course, if you click on the slot, it will show you the different things that you can do. So, what's the thing that's new for us? It's to duty and delight. Let's see what happens. Our resources, our organization has some resources. Enough for a while, but I will need to find other means of support, and my ha health is now very poor. I can only hope our delight will sustain me. So I like to try and come up with different patterns in terms of the setups, but I'm a little more time constrained doing these videos. So I'm just going to stack them on top of each other like I did last time, but I reserve the right to change my verb placement later. So we have the delightful blood. I received a little vial of our delight's blood via courier. Our delight's instructions are written herein, in the tiny tangles of cellular script. I can, we can taste them as they will taste us. If we waste it, our delight will wax wroth. So this is also an ingredient. This is auctionable, so I could sell it if I wanted, and it has got an aspect three grail. Hunger, lust, the drowning waters. The principle of the grail honors both the birth and the feast. We've got seven funds, so worldly resources. 
enough to support me for a little while in adequate comfort. And we now have forlorn blood. I have a disease. My blood is wrong. My bones are sick. I'll die. But perhaps I can preserve myself long enough with the holy blood of our delight. Oop. So while we're at it, let's, uh, while we're sick as well, <laughs> I'm going to work with my, uh, with my health. I probably should have done something with the, uh, the blood and whatnot, but I am not alone. My allies, my delight. So, Jan Sinombre, our delight. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, so with the, uh, I think because of the, the change I had with the, um, previous, uh, previous playthrough, it's, uh, not Paul Samuelson. I can change that in the save file, but I'll have to do that later. Uh, this should be a little bit different, and it will be in a bit. The Order of the Bloody Cup, an occult society dedicated to the mysteries of birth, blood, and appetite. You can use cults with the talk verb to recruit or promote followers, to send them out on errands, to gather resources. A believer can be promoted to a disciple. A few gifted disciples can be exalted even higher to Cyprians. And finally, we start with Rose, who is a believer. Rose is a slimus, but loyal. She has the aspect follower. She is edge two, and she is mortal. Finally, what do I recall? I've been vouchsafed secrets. If you ever wind up in a situation where you you're waiting like this and you don't particularly like having um, having to carry on like this in silence, uh, there is the fast forward option inside of the game. I tend to get uh, I tend to lose a lot when I do that. I am a little too easily distracted at times, so I tend to like letting the game run by on its uh, on its own pace. My own feeling on it is this: is that the game actually does have a few little mental rests built in for you. But the other thing that sometimes happens in this game is you get overwhelmed. So you always need to keep going to the work verb. You always need to keep doing certain things over and over again in order to be able to, you know, to really achieve what you're you're looking to do. And so when you start when you wind up with a whole bunch of other activities, I'm curious what that uh, what's provoking that sound. It doesn't normally do that. Uh, but basically, because when you really get into the thick of it and everything starts running around and you're you're trying to figure out exactly what's going on, it's easy to forget work. And this is one of these things that makes this game so interesting. Um, you know, I think we've all probably had that experience where we wind up, want, you know, getting really involved in some kind of work that we're doing. Um, the time just passes and, you know, we forget to eat. Now, you know, every once in a while, that's not going to be a problem. But of course, there are also the stories of cult leaders or these uh, these very significant figures who neglect themselves to a point that they meet an unfortunate end. And this, I think, is usually the ending that most people who are new to Cultist Simulator run into. Of course, we also wind up with a, a decidedly different set of circumstances at the start, and we are given the anthic elaboration to start with. The flower maker cannot touch you. He cannot find you. He always has what you desire. Even an elaboration of the properties of his work can draw the attention of, the, of ours. This formula can be used in a rite with bitter black salts and a subtle rupture or similar resources of power to summon Azim itself. And we're getting our exploration verb right away, a place to begin. Where were we? In our meeting place, I shall consider the commands I was given. So we've got the temporary headquarters. I'll put that beside the uh, Order of the Bloody Cup. And we have the vitulation recipe. This will be the biggest feature of our Apostle run. This is uh, kind of our ultimate goal here. Vitulation recipe. The delight, delight shall give life. The delight shall take life. The delight shall not be sated. We must purchase the secret savers and infuse them with the, ho the hour's gifts. Assemble the host at the most auspicious time. Raise the restless cry of the unceasing mysteries and share from the chalice murmurous. Now, if you've gone through a playthrough like you you sort of need to do in order to uh, you know to to be able to get this ending, you'll actually recognize a few of these items. Uh, so, for instance, the chalice murmurous is something that we discovered in the evening aisles. Um, it's maybe not surprising that it's particularly difficult to find a lot of these things. I've changed my mind in terms of my layout. 
Uh, I'll have to fiddle around with the other cards a little bit later. Uh, so this is already giving us some indications in terms of what's going to be involved in terms of completing our tasks. But of course, it's all also, as is the case with Cultus Simulator, uh, there's always going to be a couple of things that uh, jump in the way and keep you from uh, from doing what you wanted. Or maybe you can decide that you had other uh, other goals all along. So one problem I'm going to have with this layout is that it's not as convenient to move between some of these different uh, some of these different locations. Distant light, what is coming? Who is coming? All right, time passes. Time, the sundial shadow passes. I must have funds to live, or I will become ill. So the day is done, but so am I. I have earned my pay, but I've earned my pay. So I don't have any health right now. Now normally, what I would be doing with that health <coughs> is. Uh, using the dream slot but of course i'm currently recalling who i was you'll notice you're getting the we're getting all of the the cards in a different order than we do on a normal playthrough and so one of the things i might want to do is consider how i'm going to get a job uh my my delight has given me enough to uh, to get working so i don't necessarily need to do all of these jobs but it also doesn't hurt uh to have a little bit to, to go with i could perhaps try pursuing painting maybe what i'll do here is i'll uh, read sentimental literature to get my glimmering up and here I'm going to try and find some clerical work to tide me over in the meantime. Find work which will spare my body, if not my mind. And of course we could send Rose to search the city and find some other locations. Crowded thoroughfares by day, a fog-wrapped labyrinth by night. I'll set my minions to searching for opportunities. Glover and Glover have offered me a junior position. I start at 8 sharp tomorrow morning. One thing I should maybe mention a little bit about these characters, I, everybody has their own different way of playing these games, but one thing that I kind of like having in the back of my head, and it's not elaborate, I, I think sometimes there's this idea of doing some sort of a fantasy or, or playing some kind of a game uh, with role-playing elements where you need to work out the entire world for yourself. What I tend to do is whenever I come up with a character, this is one of the reasons why I like naming characters, is I have some broad strokes in terms of who this person is. So we know that this person is sick. We know that um, they have they were a cult leader and or, sorry a follower of a cult leader and that this cult leader gave them something which has preserved their um, preserved their life at least for a little while now and so um, in the back of my mind I, I kind of have some questions in terms of well who's this sort of person like what are some of the things they would do are they the sort of person who maybe puts like a shopping cart back when uh, when nobody's watching interesting okay no it's uh, still there an overlooked place. I may have found somewhere unusual. Um, and again, it, it isn't some big significant thing, but for me, I get a lot of enjoyment out of the game because to me, playing this game is a little bit like listening to a radio play uh, or reading a book. Um, there is a certain amount that you put inside of it, and there's a certain amount that, um, you know, the game becomes a quite a bit more enjoyable if you take some time and sort of think about what's going on. There's a lot of gaps to fill. Uh, and of course, you can sort of decide. A great example of this would be, um, it's never really clearly explained uh, what kind of scandals bring uh, some of your rivals down if you decide to do that. If you want, you can imagine the sort of scandal that is so terrible that someone has to resign. Uh, lots of different ways that you can approach that. I just want to double check. I, it's actually been a while since I've done the Apostle, so I'm not 100% sure what I do with the blood. I think it's like any other illness where I use the dream slot, but... It'd be good to know because, of course, the uh, the delightful blood doesn't last forever. Hiling, I found someone who I might pay to enact regrettable necessities. Add funds to uh, to hire them for a limited time. Now, the fortune teller is not too bad. Five lantern, especially early on in the game, is not uh, not the worst thing in the world to get a handle on. Um, but in this case, I don't actually have any need for it, and uh, that money's not going to last forever. So we'll leave it be for now. And finally. I'm going to uh, mention the, the real headline feature of the Apostle, which is someone has arrived. Uh, we are warned by the alteration of savers, by the fall of blood drops, by the prodigal bursts reported in the Dockside Districts. A great enemy of our delight has come to the city, someone who would want to prevent our work. So when you play the Apostle, there is this shadowy figure, it's a long who is pursuing you and it's not revealed immediately who it is. There just happens to be someone who is um, someone who's who's coming for you, who's trying to stop the uh, trying to stop the ascension, and it creates some very intense moments in terms of whether or not you're actually going to be able to achieve your your overall goals. All right, I consume a li uh, the little vial of blood, lie back, close my eyes. Tomorrow I will be stronger. 
So at the moment we're establishing ourselves, we've already got the uh, we've already got the follower. I'm actually going to be able to upgrade my follower if I need as well. I am much recovered. More than that, I am sumptuous. The sclera of my eyes, the veins in my wrists are a swim with gorgeous serums. When the vitulation comes, I will be the centerpiece for our delight to prove their appetite to enact the grail. And I now have savorous blood. I am of the same blood as the delightful now. As long as their savor graces my veins, my disease cannot touch me. Without their blessing, I will die. And fascination. Light leaks through the cracks. My mind is brighter than it ever was. The higher I rise, the more I see. So this, of course, is something dangerous. Uh, it is ill health. Uh, and we currently do not have a fleeting reminiscence or dread to, uh, to deal with it. I do notice that a season of sickness is coming up. So I don't need to worry that much about a uh, any kind of impending doom um well at least in the form of fascination but i should always keep an eye on on what's uh, what's going on in the upcoming seasons until i have a way of dealing with the fascination i'm going to hit the passion again just so uh, uh well the settlement i'm going to hit the books again with the sentimental literature just so i can get an extra glimmering and if i can i might uh, do another another trip out to the um to the construction site in order to get another vitality to negate the effects of the illness I'm about to get. I forgot to read the uh, Glover and Glover write-up, so the scratching of pens, the sourness of dust, the sighing of the younger Glover, and the greedy gurgling of the elder. So we're, the nice thing is we have a junior position, so uh, because we're junior there's fewer responsibilities and as a result I'm able to take a little bit of time off work to do the thing I really want to do which is lift heavy things and put them to back down again. Backbreaking work for meager pay, is this the best that I can do? At the moment it is because I need to get stronger. So we're waiting for the hireling to finish but I'm going to take a minute here with Rose and I'm going to uh, advance her within the order of the bloody cup. So one of the ways that I can do that is with the Anthic Elaboration due to its high, uh, its high Grail rating. Although I could have done that pretty much with, uh, with anything with a certain level of Grail. Better not, I must be careful of the company that I keep. So let's take a minute here and take the Order of the Bloody Cup. Let's talk with Rose and we'll bring in the Anthic Elaboration. Promote a believer by invoking Grail. My follower will kneel as a novice and rise as an initiate. I will administer the necessary oaths myself. And finally, someone is watching. The immortal is in the, sh the immortal in the shadows ponders their next move. So, as we provoke our enemy, they will learn from us. Their attacks will grow deadlier. This, just like the passage of time. In fact, this is maybe the dis the difference between the main uh, the main game and the apostle run. In the main game, your greatest enemy is the passage of time. Uh, if you don't open the moldering tomes, if you don't look into the secrets beneath the skin of the world, then you are probably not going to fall to uh, despair or fascination. It's really once you start going down that path that the trouble comes. In fact, as long as you're able to keep a roof over your head and food in your belly, uh, you're going to have perhaps an unremarkable life, but you are not going to suffer any of the problems that Cultist Simulator has to throw at you. Here, you are already uh, inducted into the, uh, the mysteries of, uh, of this world. And at this point, you are now being hunted by a supernatural force. And of course, you already have the disease, and so you're well into the, uh, well into the trouble. And so you have, in this particular playthrough, multiple ticking timers that are just waiting to crush you at the appropriate moment. So we'll take a little bit more time. I'm going to try and move Rose up, but this is going to be as good of a place to end, I think, because we've now revealed our great enemy, and the rest of the experience is going to be trying to deal with, uh, trying to deal with um, the challenges that we face. By the way, I am potentially going to lose if I don't get the uh, if I don't get my health back. So. Read sentimental literature. I've passed the time. I've been inclined to tears, and afterwards inclined to laughter. Meanwhile, the world continues. So I wasn't too worried about that, given the fact that it does pick up the health. But it is worth mentioning. I don't actually have. Uh, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any sort of replacement health for myself. So let's pick up the details. And I think at that point we're going to leave it. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.